Howdy folks, John here. It finally arrived and as a Scale RC helicopter enthusiast, I have been waiting for this little helicopter for a good month now. I've been out of town for a bit, but uh, was greeted with this when I got home. So happy. This, as you can tell, is a very detailed scale Sikorsky UH-60 Blackhawk RC helicopter. It is the Ishin E200. In this review, we'll be taking a close look both on the outside and the inside of this helicopter. We'll be binding it up to my computerized radio and of course test flying it and giving you my thoughts. Let's get into it. I really want to thank Banggood for sending me the E200. Like I said, as a scale enthusiast, this one was uh, a pretty bright blip on the radar. Comes nicely packaged, very well protected. So we get the helicopter. This is the bind and fly version. So it doesn't come with the radio. Uh, like all of Ishin's RC helicopters though, it uses the very popular Futaba SFH SS protocol. So any uh, computerized radio that's running that protocol, whether it be Futaba or any of the multi-protocol options out there, you can bind it to any one of those radios. We'll look at the helicopter in more detail in just a bit. Let's see what else we get. Got the user manual. I had a quick peek through it. It's not great, but the main thing is you've got a good parts listing with parts numbers. As far as spare parts, comes with four extra main blades, one extra tail blade, bunch of little screws, and there are a lot of little screws on this thing, and I can see those getting lost pretty easy. If you do any maintenance on this thing or have to repair it, and a little Phillips screwdriver and a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Comes with a wall wart for the charger. Here is the little charger. Ugh, it's really crammed in here. So you can only charge one pack at a time. And that is the biggest downfall of this helicopter are the batteries. I'll explain that in a bit but uh, we'll get this plugged in right now so we can start charging up some packs. This is the three battery version, so it came with three batteries. There's one on the helicopter already. Yeah, so we'll set that aside. So I hate these type of batteries. They're proprietary. You can't properly monitor them. You know, you can't hook them up to a computerized charger to check the maximum voltage, the storage voltage, can't check the cell internal resistance. It's the biggest disappointment on this helicopter. You know, they've got a little bar indicator on them to give you an approximate charge level, but uh, it's not great. I've checked this with a digital voltmeter and when it says it's 50% charge, it's essentially, you know, right down to low 80% discharge state. So I don't trust these things at all. There's so many better options and of course you can't parallel charge these type of proprietary packs. You're stuck with them. They, they cost a lot. Ah, that is the biggest downfall of this heli in my opinion. Give us regular battery packs. Come on guys. So with that little rant out of the way, let's get to the uh, heli itself because it is spectacular. For anyone who likes scale helicopters, I don't think you will be anything but super impressed with the detail on this thing. It is absolutely stunning. The amount of rivet detail and small little details on this thing. We've got little cable cutters. Even the doors slide partially open. Even the struts, they're sprung on the wheels. The wheels turn, even the little back one. Windshield wipers, just phenomenal. And if all the scale lighting is already on there. The rotor blades themselves, they're even scale with the, where are you? Come on. There. You know, they've got the little scale delted tips on them. They are a fully symmetrical blade, so yes, you can do aerobatics with this. However, it's a scale heli and it's super fragile. And this is not meant for a brand new collective pitch flyer. You have to be a pretty good 
collective pitch flyer to even consider something like this because even a slightly moderate hard landing will break things on it. Just handling it, you can break things on it. That's how, that's how fragile all these little scale details are. Four rotor head, as you saw, it's got a brushless direct drive tail motor. We'll see how the hold is when we test fly it. And the biggest benefit with this helicopter, it is the first small scale helicopter that is using a direct drive main motor. So just like the OMP M2s, the Ishin E180, uh, direct drive, super quiet, super efficient. That is probably the best mechanical aspect of this heli. And I found the best way to change the batteries on this thing. Uh, the best place to hold it is right behind the sliding doors here. You can get a good grip without damaging anything. I originally tried holding it at the front and there's just too many fragile parts on here that you can snap. So hold it behind the sliding doors and then you can get at the battery to change the batteries. You just push these little tabs in on the side and they're a bit of a bugger to change. There's these contact pins on the back that engage these contact pins inside the bottom of the helicopter here. And the little searchlight is actually part of the battery. Well, it's not part of it, but you have to change it with the battery changes. And I can see this getting broken pretty easy. You just slide it forwards on this little pin, take the connector out, put it on your new battery, you know, I honestly can't see doing this often. I'm probably just going to fly it without this light. So hold it from behind, snap it into place. But as I said, this is the weakest link of the heli, is this miserable proprietary battery pack. I kind of get the idea of just having like a cartridge, like a power tool battery, but it really limits options and really how hard would it be just to have a 3S pack, that's what these are by the way, they're 3S, uh, 1350 milliamp hours. But how hard would it be to have a 3S pack with a standard XT30 plug on it that you could just put in the bay here and just have a nice little cover that uh, snaps over top. So to get to the fly barless system or flight controller, uh, you have to remove this little cover at the front of the heli here, or the top of the doghouse. There's just two tiny little Phillips screws on either side. End of the video, I'll open this thing right up. There are so many little Phillips screws along here to get this fuselage off, and I want to fly it before doing that, just in the off chance I can't get it back together. I don't think that's going to be a problem, but play it safe than sorry, right? Oh, so this will just pop off hopefully. There we go. Here we can get to the fly barless system or flight controller. Like I said, it's got the built-in SFHSSRX. As you can see though, we've also got, focus, a port for SBUS. So you could use a micro SBUS receiver or a small DSMX spectrum receiver if you wanted to fly it with one of those radios as well but you'd have to find some place to put the receiver and it's tight in here. Anyway, the bind button is kind of right at the front here. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll put it into bind mode so you power it up. And just get some kind of little pokey tool. Just got a little hex driver here and we'll just hold the bind button in. So it's in bind mode, or the little green light, the light on the back here lights up solid green. I've already programmed a new heli into my radio. Can you turn me on? Normal mode, throttle hold, low rates, rudder low, acro mode. And SFH SS auto binds. And there we go. It's that simple. This little red light back here, by the way, it shows when you're in either normal gyro mode in red. If we go into self-level mode, so 
self level mode. Turn solid green. So it's a nice external visual reference to tell you what uh, stabilization mode you're in. So out of the box setup was really good. Swash plate is nice and level side to side and front to back so it should be good in good trim out of the box at least on this example. And I had to tweak my channel 6, my collective channel just a little bit. Had to change the centering position so at midpoint on my pitch curve uh, just look at these two outside blades, ignore the center one. They're pretty much matching up, showing us we're at zero degrees of collective. And then at full positive collective, I'm at plus 10 degrees. I just use my little wedge gauge for that. Probably can't see that on the camera, but the blades are lining up to the 10 degree wedge. And same with negative, exactly 10 degrees separation. So I've got a nice symmetrical plus minus 10 degree collective range on this thing. Not that I'm going to be flying that for scale. I'll probably be running around minus 1 to plus 10. But I'll go over my collective ranges uh, in the different flight modes when I'm flying it. Flying the Ishin E200 UH-60 Blackhawk. So I'm going to try to do some really smooth scale flying here. My setup right now, I'm running a flatline 60% throttle curve, minus 1 to plus 10 degrees on my collective, and only 40% output dual rate on my cyclic. That's the kind of response with 40% dual rate, very tame for tame scale flight. And tail rotors at 50%, and that's the yaw rate. So we'll just do a few circuits here, trying to keep it nice and scale-like. I can't believe how smooth it is. Six. Got a little bit of a breeze, but those four rotor blades are just eating them up. Very trim right out of the box here, or at least with my radio set up. Do a hands-off shot. You can see very stable. Can't get over how quiet it is, but again, that's uh, to be expected with these direct drive brushless main rotors. The tail rotor is way noisier than the main. Let's do a full collective climb out. Nice and tame there. Now I'm just going to switch into my highest dual rate for tail rotor. See how the tail rotor response is. Gain is good. Just a little bit of bounce back, but not bad. Way too fast for scale flight though. The R8. <laughs> So now I'll go into my next highest head speed, which is 70% flat line on my throttle curve. And I'm going to be running minus 3 to plus 10 collective range here. Quite a bit more aggressive, but still no blowout of the tail. Ooh, good gust of wind coming now but this thing just eats it up. Man, that looks good. Four. Just an amazing little scale heli. Just looks phenomenal. The detail on it. I wanna fly this in the evening when the uh, light gets low. Seeing all these uh, lights on it'll probably look pretty cool at night. Oh, let's try out uh, self-level mode. We're in normal gyro mode now. You can tell by the little red light on the top. There it turns green in self-level mode. It really uh, tames down cyclic. 
So with this much dual rate, auto level is too unresponsive. But auto level is good out of the box. It's not really drifting. You know, we've got the wind pushing it around, but uh, might have a little bit of a rear drift. Certainly not my cup of tea, how I want a helicopter to feel or behave. So we'll go back into normal gyro. There we go. Now it's smooth again. Okay, and I know people want to know, can you do aerobatics with it? Well, it's scale. Uh, and you increase the risk of damaging it, of course, but let's try it. So we'll go into our highest head speed. Can't get the tail rotor to blow out though, even with those four blades biting into the air. Just huge torque spikes there, but that little tail rotor, it's fighting, but it won't blow out. Okay, and we'll turn off our dual rate, so we've got 100% on cyclic. Oh! Way too aggressive. Ah, let's try a forward flip. Back flip. So it can do it. Looks pretty ridiculous, but you can certainly do aerobatics if you want. But I'm going back to nice tame scale. Actually, let's, uh, let's try a roll. Yeah, it's, uh, you can tell it's pulling a lot of weight. Yeah, risk factor goes up. Going back to tame scale, the way this thing's meant to be flowing. Let's do a high approach here. Man, that looks good. Just a beautiful looking little scale helicopter. So impressed. It's wide. Looks good. But we better land it. Don't want to pooch this battery. Let's see if we can do a rolling takeoff. Oh, uh, the light, the light jams. I think to do a rolling takeoff, we're gonna have to remove that front mounted light. So one of the funnest things to do with wheeled helicopters is rolling takeoffs and landings. I just love doing these. Good skill builders too. And you can't do it with the little light on the front because you can't give it enough forward cyclic pitch to get it to roll. So you just get it light on the skids, ready to take off, and then you just give it a little forward cyclic, and you can roll along. Just give a little more collective, and nice smooth takeoff. And landing's pretty much opposite. Just get it set up for your approach. Just bring it in red, slow, and then just slowly lower the collective until it's down. Let's take it apart now and see what makes it tick. Many, many minutes later. That was no small task taking it apart. I count 17 fasteners, two of which had me scratching my head for quite a while. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the top of the shells apart. And there's a hidden one through the engine exhaust you have to come through and then one underneath the engine nacelle here. I didn't even see it. But once I got those two out, 
uh, came apart relatively easy, but you got to be careful. Like I said, fragile. I was holding the front and just caught the little grab bar here and it's cracked already. Best advice, never crash it and then you never have to get into it. You know, all scale helis are hard to get into, but uh, this one with all those fasteners, it's, uh, yeah, it's a process. You can see the uh, LED lighting is nicely routed inside here. It's taped for the red ones. We've got a little Pico plug on the front. This is a nice soft high flex silicone wire. Again, the detail is just amazing, but fragile. Looking at the other half, actually let's start at the uh, tail rotor here. So we've got two screws holding the tail rotor onto the brushless outrunner can. On the inside here, it's uh, bolted on with four little hex bolts onto this carbon reinforcement plate that runs the length of the vertical stabilizer. And that in turn is mounted to this oversized stiff carbon square boom. We've got our three ECCPM servos arranged in a 120 degree format for the swash. Swash plate is plastic on the bottom half, aluminum on the top. Got a stainless steel main shaft. Four bladed rotor head, like I said, it's undampened. There's quite a bit of flex in the blades, so the blades are providing the dampening. DFC style blade grip arms and properly shaped to account for the 90 degree phase lag. And there's the nice big brushless outrunner motor. Boy, there's a lot of poles in this thing. And it just peeks out the bottom. And our three wires going to our speed control and flight control unit. Two boards in there. The ESC is at the bottom. The uh, flight controller fly barless system is at the top. Already went over the um, connections there. It's got three adjustment pots like most of these small helis have. One's for cyclic agility. The other two are for cyclic gain adjustment and tail gain adjustment. I flew this out of the box with these settings. I didn't touch any of these pots. I think for more realistic scale, I might want to turn down the cyclic agility pot a little bit, but it flew great out of the box. No real big deal there. Uh, there's where that little red Pico plug plugs into for the red LEDs. The one beside it is for the green on this side. And then the one at the front is for the dual colored status indicator LED at the top. And there's the power strip for the contacts for the battery yeah get the light in there there we go and then on the top half they've got their own little circuit board that you can probably replace if you had to uh, it looks like just the two outside pins are your power and ground and there is a middle pin with a really small little blue wire it's probably to tell when the battery is turned on and getting back to that miserable battery, let's just check something out here I'm curious about. So if you wanted to test the battery voltage, uh, you can go to either the two outsides. That'll be your power and ground. Try to get this in frame. Oh, there's our three cells reading at 11.35 volts. Like I said, so both of these are ground on this side. This is showing cell one, 3.78. There's that middle one that that blue wire goes to, probably just to tell the heli is turned on. And this is probably cell two cells. Yep. And then there's our three cells. So to me, you could probably mod this to run a regular battery. It's just that switch blue wire. Don't know what that does have to open this up to figure it out. There are little Phillips screws on this thing, so you could open it up if you ever wanted to change the 3S pack inside, assuming you could find one that fits it. But again, that's the biggest disappointment of this heli. Otherwise, really, really impressive machine. First small scale helicopter that is direct drive. Very cool. I got to get it back together before it gets too dark out so we can see it at night outside for a quick little flight. Later that night.
camera's pretty bad in low light conditions. Really grainy here and out of focus, but uh, oh man, it looks good at night. Looks way better in person than what this camera is indicating. Oh, mosquitoes are bad. Again, links are below in the description if you want to check out this cool little Isheen 200 scale UH-60 Blackhawk. And until next time, thanks for watching folks, and happy flights.